Hey, it's Chandra and I am back with another God said prophetic word. I am encouraged by this word and I hope that you will be too. I am so excited to share it with you guys. This message is for those who are in the season of readying for marriage, who are waiting for a kingdom spouse, but also that you're in transition, that God has been speaking to you about moving. So this is a confirmation. This is a, um, a, a two-time confirmation uh, in that um, this occurred to me twice. This happened to me twice in the same day. And so I'm going to just share it with you because it is for someone. I'm not sure who this message is for, but I do believe that God is sending a word to you. And so I want you to lean in with me and the Holy Spirit as I share it. And then take it back to the Holy Spirit and ask for confirmation just to make sure and, and ensure that it's for you. Because it has such a um, a um, flow about it that it really does resonate in the spirit and for the spirit for anyone, but it is specific to someone or some ones, I should say, for those who are within season. And so I want to share this with you um, and then I'll do my best to break it down as slowly as possible. So bear with me if I get excited. Let's, let's get into the prayer so we can invite Holy Spirit in to join us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, that you would send this message to me to share with your children in the kingdom. I pray that I answer and give um, information as you provide it to me. I pray that it gives clear and concise confirmation. But I also hope that it serves as an encouragement for those who have been seeking prayer and looking for answers. Father, we invite you in. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We invite you in. Please join me. Help correct me where I'm off. Keep me on track where I'm wrong or where I um, need to be. And I pray and give all glory and honor to you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you would share this through me to your children. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, so this word came to me. It started on Sunday um, evening, midnight hour Sunday. So going into Monday, um, which is how I ended up with it twice in one day. And so um, basically that um, word came to me um, as um, a, a train rail come, a train comes down the track. I could hear the hear the, the 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 train coming, the horn blowing. I could hear the the um, sound of the the arms that let down and it makes the noise and the flashing lights and the whole thing that all happened that all occurred and so um, I want to share with you what came out of the revelation of the train coming by um, in the midnight hour okay so it says um, a, a whole bunch of things kind of came out of it. First, there was a car that was a, 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 on the track that said Big Boss. And I'm going to show you the picture so that you'll see the confirmation for that. But that means action in motion. Um, that the Big Boss, our Father, our Father God is in motion and that he's working on your behalf. That he has not stopped. He has not slowed. He's in progress. Um, all of the changes and all of the transformation that you've been going through while that's in progress he is also in progress of um, helping get you to where he ultimately wants you to be um, not only just location but spiritually to help ready you he goes before us as we know to help us ready for what we're entering into he doesn't take us to a season and leave us he basically he takes us he prepares ahead of time for us to enter into a season. He meets us in the season, guides us through that season, and then takes us out of it into the next season when we level up, right? And so the goal is, is that in this word, you'll find confirmation for God is moving on your behalf as the big boss. You know, as the train goes by, I saw the word big boss. And so that offered me such huge encouragement. And then... The other part of that is, is that this is, you know, a train is on a set course. It's on a set path. Um, it doesn't um, deviate from what has been scheduled. It doesn't from the shipyard or from the train yard. It, it has a start, a starting point and it has a destination. And that destination is ultimately where God is going to lead you. But the in-between, the, trans, the transferring and transporting of the in-between is where you currently are. And so God is saying, don't worry, I have... You on a set path. You're going to make it to your destination. You're going to be on time for your 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 um, transition point. And that's another point to bring up is is that when we are in season, we have a 
everything has to be strategically timed. And so obedience to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, no matter how small, no matter how minute, no more, no matter how weird or strange the request might be that he gives you, do it because that gives you um, and puts you in place, in position for an encounter, some type of destiny encounter, some type of godly encounter that is required to help further you along in your journey. And so being on track with the Lord and being in emotion with the Lord is what he's saying. You've got to stay on pace. You've got to keep to what I've given you as a schedule. You've got to keep what I've given you as your um, day-to-day routine, but you're always in motion in terms of that expectancy that I'm coming for you, that I'm sending for you, that I'm aligning you with the right partners, right? And so that's so, so good. It, and so it, it, what the Holy Spirit gave to me was set course on path does not deviate. Arrives at appointed time set on schedule. So again, he is going to put you, um, he's putting you in place so that you can get to where you're destined to be. But you have to be in transit. You have to be in motion. So you have to really take a huge leap of faith to know that God is not just sent us out. He puts us in motion on purpose and for purpose so that you can meet to uh, meet up or align with destiny partners. But when you're on that track and they're on that track, you're going to encounter each other and you're also going to be taking care of that a rail is set and firm. It's fixed. It's not wobbly. It's not unstable. It is a strong structure that can hold a lot of weight in the mantle that God as the big boss holds for us is is that we get to be along for the ride. We don't have to carry the work. We don't have to carry the load for ourselves, right? And so um, the time, the time, the track, the train ran for about six minutes and two seconds, right? So because I videoed it, I could pull the time, but it says six minutes, um, 6.02 minutes long. And so that came to me as um, looking at strong concordance. That means disclosure, appearing, coming, lighten, manifestation, be revealed um, in revelation. And so that says to me that what is approaching, what you're approaching, approaching and going to um, um, eventually have revelation on, it's going to bring a lot of wisdom. It's going to bring a revelation to you as to why you had to go through the previous steps. And also it's going to give you insight about what's coming ahead for you, right? So if you're in a season where you've been in an unsure about everything, you've been praying and trying to stay faithful, know that God hears you, know that he is bringing revelation. He's bringing a lightning, um, a, a visibility to your path that he's not going to put you on a track that's totally dark, but he's going to light your path and your step as you go. Excuse me. And so this manifestation that's coming and appearing, it's coming soon because a train doesn't take, um, a train doesn't take eons to get to its destination, right? It has a certain um, start and a certain end time. So that means that it's, it, once it's in motion, it's going to arrive. It's going to hit its destination point. And that that comes quickly. That's not something that it will take, you know, days, months, and years to happen. It's, it's within hours, like hours to days of arriving to its destination. And so that um, that broke down the that word for um, in Greek broke down to um, to take off the cover that is disclosed um, to reveal to cover to reveal the cover. So God has had you cloaked. He's had you a cloud of coverage protecting you and keeping you in the season. And so he is readying. He is readying and saying to you, be ready because you're about to be revealed. Be ready because you're about to be released. Be ready because you're about to be disclosed outward. So an outward revealing, an outward showing, an outward um, disclosure of who you are to him and what you've been working on as a, um, a kingdom um, daughter or son. And that what he has put in you and imparted in you as your spiritual gift is is near readiness to be um, shared with others, to be shared in a way that brings disclosure about all that has been happening um, in um, in the the time of quiet, in the time of coverage, in the time of being alone and isolated. So your isolation really hasn't been about punishment at all. It really has been rest. It should be about rest. So if you're not restful, you need to ask for peace. You need to ask for a high infusion um, download of peace and, and just a, a knowing that he's taking care of you should give you that. But if you're still uneasy, just pray for, pray for peace. 
and he will give it to you, right? He's a good father. He gives us exactly what we need on time of when we need it. And so as you have been in this in this season of quiet and in the season of rest, he is now saying, ready, get ready. So prepare yourself to be revealed. Prepare yourself to be in the light. Prepare yourself to be um, in, a, in an exposure that brings revelation to who you are and to him, but also how you're going to serve others. How are you going to help others through their journey as they transition and as they begin to walk? So that should be huge encouragement for someone. It, it encourages me. Um, and even though this word is directly for someone else, I know that it's coming for me. And so I, I am super encouraged that he has given me a preview of what is to come. And so, but for you, take it as full confirmation, take it back to the Holy Spirit and just pray in the spirit to ask if this message is for you directly. And then, so the, the, um, that happened like midnight ish of the hour. Um, and then, so I noticed, I had to go back and slow the video, like very slow, slow the video. I noticed that the train number um, for the, that came across the track, one of the cars had a 536 that kind of jumped out at me. And that means a beginning of sacrifice that is first fruit. A, be a beginning of sacrifice that is first fruit. And so we know that we are called to provide God our first fruits of anything that we do with our hands, anything we're working on with our hands or anything we're doing in the name of Jesus, we give first fruit back to him as our sacrifice, as our tithe, as our, as our thank you for him giving us 100%. He wants 10% of it back, the first fruit of it, right? Well, you also have to look at that you yourself are a fruit. You are a fruit of his work. You are a fruit of what he has been producing and working and nurturing on in his garden, right? And so as one of his chosen, you go first. We always go first. We are children of God and we are called to sacrifice first. We're called to tithe first. We're called to serve first. We're called to lead first. We're called to um, give up our seat first. We're called to pass on the plate first. We're called to turn down our, fl our flesh first. We're first. We're first to sacrifice in that way because we are kingly. We're of the kingdom and the king goes first, which is why Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for us so that we would then be able to follow. But he went first. And so we're called to be like Jesus and go first, go first in what you're doing every day when you're serving. And so this says this resonated with me because it gives us an idea that God is um, is mindful of first fruits even today. He is mindful of first fruits in that the work that he's been pouring into you, he wants you to go first in sharing, wants you to go first in helping others find their testimony, helping others find their voice. Um, by you being the example, you being the one who goes first, you then serve as the first fruit for the work that he's doing in this new um, new kingdom, this new way of being for becoming Christian and, and walking in the faith with Jesus. Um, the other part of this was it um, it gave a breakout word that came from that 536. And that um, is in concordance, strong concordance as number 556. And that means to commence in order of time, to commence in order of time and just rehearse, rehearse from the beginning. So he's saying all that he's downloaded into you, all that he shared with you, all the things that you've gotten in the secret place and you've had daydreams about and you've had visions about and you've dreamt overnight about and just an inkling or something kind of came to you as an idea of some sort. All those things he's saying, organize it in a way that allows you to um, understand it but be able to share it with others. And that means that you would spend time rehearsing and understanding the, the word of knowledge that he's giving you, understanding the scriptures that have come so that you can then share them with others and be confident, be confident in knowing that the work that you've done has value. No matter how small you think it is, okay, I, I don't remember all the scriptures or I don't remember all, you know, whatever the things that kind of come and run through your mind. Know that it, with a mustard seed of faith, the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you and will bring to your remembrance every scripture that you need in the moment of serving someone. Because when we work for him, we're just the vessel. He pours into us and it flows out of us. It's not for us to recall it all. It's not for us to do it all. It's not for us to heal. Not for us to do all of that. That's the Holy Spirit's job. We are to be the vessel in which he uses. And so if we can bring to remembrance 
to go back and just understand what are the things that I've learned? Process for yourself and reflect what you have gone through so you'll remember all that you have had to go through when it's time for you to share with others. You'll have that as a, a dress rehearsal, so to speak, so that when it's time, when you're in the light, in the spotlight, because that that is apparent that that's coming for someone, then your words will come with eloquence and your confidence will stand as Godfidence. Your confidence will be God confidence led. So you don't have to worry and you don't have to fret in this moment. Okay, so then um, it goes on to say, Holy Spirit goes on to say that thinking of going back to the analogy for the train is that God is moving you. You're not going to stay wherever you are. You're not going to stay. That's not your permanent place unless he said different. Um, I, but how this is reading is, is that God is moving you. And so when I ask, well, Lord, are you moving me? What's happening here? He goes, be ready. And so I, the, my response was, when? When should I be ready? Like thinking as though it's me or talking as though it's me. And he responded back all the time. Be on alert. Be awake. And then, um, and then it goes, um, he goes to say, you are the first of many. Keep focus and keep obedience. So all the things that you, how you're eating, how you're sleeping, how you're working out, um, what you're doing as far as your day to day, there's a cadence and a pattern and a structure, as I've mentioned in other videos that you should be attentive to, um, making sure that you're following through with those things. And then when I did a, um, he gave me the prompt to do a time check to kind of like look at the time. Um, and it ran in, into the window of about 1235 ish. Um, in the a.m. So we're in the midnight at this point. And so I'm up in the midnight hour. But that that um, came back at, at Hebrews um, word that means a section of a shekel that is um, Becca, half a shekel. And so this is 1235 is the the um, Hebrew number. And so the scripture that this refers back to is Genesis 24, 22 which is the story of um, where the prophet goes to find um, a wife for Isaiah. And so as he's off on his journey, you know, he prays that the Lord will guide him and give him favor and blesses him not to just choose anyone, but he has to pick the right person. And he gives God, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, if I ask for a cup, if I ask for water and for me and my, my camels and, and this person offers it, that's my signal to know that, um, she's the godly spouse that God has ordained to be with Isaiah. And so all that kind of happens. And so as we know, Isaiah and Rebecca got married and, and that whole thing transpired. But what connects to me in this story um, of him bringing that forth is, is, is that this is a kingdom spouse message. This is that you're moving forward to be with your kingdom spouse. You're, you're, you're um, being rewarded through the gifts that um, like he brought for Rebecca, you're being rewarded as you move forward. So there's an abundance that's coming to you, but then also that you're paired and ma married to your ordained kingdom spouse. And that's huge. That's that's like revelation and celebration all at <laughs> once. Hallelujah. We cannot give God um, any less glory than he is deserving. He is deserving of so much so much favor and thank yous because he is pairing you with your kingdom spouse. And so take that back to him and confirm that this part is for you because it could be just bits and parts of this is for you versus the entire message being for you. But I pray that it is for you because then that 1235 breaks down to 1234 and then it says to cleave, um, generally to break or rip open, to make a breach, a break forth, um, to ready, uh, be ready to burst and cleave. And so we know that in marriage, it means cleaving means leaving your family to be partnered with your, your kingdom spouse. But this also is a, a, a word of encouragement for those who are in their transformation season that you are, you're breaking through. This is a breakthrough moment for you, whether you're being paired with your husband, kingdom spouse or not. Excuse me, this is still a breakthrough moment because revelation is coming to you, light is coming to you, movement is coming to you. Like there's an abundance of things that are coming down that track, right? So every train car has has a benefit if you want to kind of look at it that way. And so God is a God who 
prepares you from the beginning to the end of, of the transformation. And so it's not just the first train car that's going to have something. Each subsequent train uh, car on the track will have something until you get to the end, which is the caboose, which is where the big boss is riding. He is backing you. He's supporting you. He's pushing you to your next movement so that you don't miss your time. You don't miss your um, in-season um, moment of breakthrough. Um, and so just a, kind of a small um, kind of a transition thought there. When we're in season and when you're in the right season, there is a specific time ordained for every single good thing to occur. And so we have to be faithful to be obedient, to be in place so that we can receive um, at the right moment, the right crossing the right crossover so we can level up spiritually but then also that we so that we can reap the rewards that God has already set aside for us at that moment and so that's what this is saying is that a cleaving is occurring cleaving of your old life a cleaving of the job that you just left a cleaving of bad relationships that you've gotten rid of as you started this new year then also that we're in a in the season of Adar like we're in 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 a transformation moment just February in itself is is a godly month in the kingdom as it's starting to to close off one year and go into the new year for um in God's calendar so a lot of it has to do with timing and season and just being um consciously aware of it that he has put you this is a time and a place such as a time as this for you in, in this moment. Okay, so we're gonna continue so that I can get you back to your day. Um, all right, so then the second part of this, let's see, second part is as a scroll down. So it says, um, so you know in, in, in that, in the, I lost my train of thought, sorry. So when Rebecca was chosen, she received a visit. So it was a visitation that occurred. That's how the prophet came to her. Was He was there traveling to visit her specifically or to visit someone in their, in, in the, in the territory. But it ended up being that she was the identified person that was to be, to help fulfill the prophetic word that was set forth, right? So, um, Holy Spirit is saying, anticipate a holy visitation. Some of you are going to receive a, a, um, prophetic godly um, visitation while you sleep. Some of you are going to find it, find that you're going to be out and about. He's going to tell you, go here specifically, go to the grocery store, go to the dry cleaner, go somewhere, wherever it is, you're going to have this overwhelming sense, sense of, I have to be somewhere and I need to get there. I need to go now. And that's the Holy Spirit nudging and encouraging you to go forth. And so as you go about these obedience um, assignments, He's going to have you encounter, it would be a holy encounter, it would be a visitation that the Holy Spirit is um, is putting in your path to help you reach your destiny mark. So you have to hit these little checkpoints. And every checkpoint, so to speak, is an encounter that has to occur in order for your end destination to be achieved, right? And so that just, you think about it in terms of trains, trains will cross over tracks at intersections and the cars are waiting and two or three miles down the road is another uh, railroad crossing. Well, those railroad crossings um, are, consider them to be divine appointments that have been arranged to help you get to where you need to be. And so things that you should be aware of, just watch out for anything that is of um, as you use your discernment that it, if it doesn't sound right or stick to you uh, in a way that brings you peace, then you definitely need to ask Holy Spirit, is this the divine encounter that you put me in? Or has the, the enemy put himself into my path? And so um, just know that all visitations may or may not, may not be godly, but you use your Holy Spirit uh, and your discernment to know what is of God's um, preparation for you. And then other things as we get here. So um, with the thought of visitation um, and God sending you a destiny partner visit, um, the notice, the note was that came out of that time frame was to keep awake, to watch, be vigilant and be awake. And so that's just being aware of your surroundings, aware of what's happening around you, aware of um, how does where he's asking me to go connect in my in my destination or in my um, in my journey 
Is there a pattern that's there? Has he been sending me to the same bookstore repeatedly? Or am I going somewhere new every single time? It, it could be anything. And I can't tell you specifically, you really do have to pray in the spirit to ask um, for more um, clarity about your specific situation. But I can tell you that um, if he's preparing you to meet with someone in your destiny, um, a destiny partner, then that means that you're very close to another breakthrough. You're very close to being at a place where you can move forward um, and see the progress and see the manifestation in the physical, right? Which is what we ultimately want. We want to see it all and we want to see it now. <laughs> Amen. Holy Spirit is like, be patient. But that's essentially what it is. We're being, having to be very patient to see the manifestation in the real. The first um, part of the um, encounter that I had. And then the second one I'll post is another video because it'll make it twice as lengthy, but it, the other part of it is not as long. And so it'll be a lot quicker. Um, but God is saying live in love and I'm saying live in love because everywhere else is fake. I will catch you on the next one. Have a great day.